in Jerusalem when, when the Israelites were really bad. They were praising other idols. So King Nebuchadnezzar took them everything from Daniel for 40 years in Babylon. They never learned the lessons, yeah? They keep on complaining and praising idols. But after 40 years, God told Jeremiah, for I know the plans I have for you, Jeremiah, for all the Israelites in Jerusalem and Judah, plans to not harm them, but prosper them, and plans to give them hope in the future. Let's sing the song. For I know the plans I have for you. See with me. Keep the glass in the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. See with me, church. For I know the plans I have for you. Declares the Lord. Plans to give you and a future.
Philippians 6, uh, 1, 6 says that he who began a good work in you, the Lord will complete it.
Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for being with us and loving us first, Father God. We love you so much. Let's pray first, okay? Let's pray. Father God, we just uh, want to thank you, Lord, for this time that I can share the word to my brothers and sisters here in the park, the open door. Thank you, Lord, for loving us first, Father God. And thank you for dying on us on the cross, Lord, for the remissions of our sins. And we are so blessed to have you in our life, Lord. Remind us, Lord, to be always thankful and grateful no matter what we have. In your name we pray. Amen. Okay, take your notes, guys. Well, today's message again is, let me see. Wow. Okay. Oh, you got mine? <laughs> no more. We don't have no more copy. <laughs> oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. Okay. See, thankful with a grateful heart. The first. Uh... Okay, let me see. The first verse here I put in is now Psalms 92, 1 to 5. Let's uh, read this together, okay? Ready? 
Go. It is good to give thanks to the Lord and to sing praises to your name, O Most High, to declare your loving kindness in the morning and your faithfulness every night on an instrument of ten strings, on the lute and on the harp with a harmonious sound. For you, Lord, have made me glad through your work. I will triumph in the works of your hands. O Lord, how great are your works. Your thoughts are very deep. It's good to give thanks to the Lord. This is the uh, King David, the greatest king of Israel. Yeah, it, it's good to give thanks. And with everything here, lutes, strings, we have it in the keyboard earlier. So it's really good to um, be able to give thanks to the Lord, everything. Uh, let me uh, take you back in Israel in the olden times, the, the time when they were um, bondage, when they were walking in the wilderness. Yeah, in Israel, uh, God take them out of Egypt from Mount Sinai, of course. Moses was given the Ten Commandments on Mount Sinai. But in the wilderness for 40 years, they were always complaining. As you read the Bible, they always uh, worship idols, yeah? So the first five book of Moses, especially Leviticus, if you guys read about it, I know it's going to be boring. You won't understand if you don't, uh, somebody will teach you about it, yeah? But in that, in that, uh, Leviticus, Moses specifically have uh, instruction for the Israelites, yeah? In detailed uh, description and warnings if they violated them. So God uses sacrifices at that time when they were in the wilderness, like offerings and thanksgiving and the laws he gave, again, the Ten Commandments, yeah? In order to teach them, right? And so one of the things he wanted to teach them was being thankful and grateful being thankful and grateful. So what did they do? They offered thanksgiving sacrifices every morning and every evening. So he wanted them to be reminded that he was God and that they have to honor him as God, right? And then that they were to depend upon him because he was the source of what they had and everything they do. Yeah, God has a specific reason for that thanksgiving sacrifice. Let's see what the psalmist uh, um, uh, wrote here. It's, I think it's in your notes, yeah? Um, Psalms 50, 23. Let's read it together. Those who sacrifice thanksgiving offerings honors me, and to the blameless I will show my salvation. See that? Those who sacrifice offerings honors him as the God. So thankful hearts still honors God, Yeah. When you say thank you, Jesus, thank you, thank you, Lord, praise and thank you, what we do is honoring him as our Lord. Amen? You're honoring him as the source of all our blessings. Praise God from whom all, what? Blessings flow, right? So we must honor God all the time. No need to have that sacrifice anymore right now. We don't need to kill or something, you know. It's not, uh, that wasn't the olden times. Right now, you can just honor God. Sit down, kneel, pray in your own room, or any, there's no rule for praying when you give uh, God the glory and thanking Him. Okay, I'm going to give you five things that we should be thankful and grateful. It's in your notes. The first bullet there is we should be thankful and grateful that our eternal destination is secure. Do you know where that is? Our eternal destination is secure up in heaven, right? That's the promise God gave us, eternal life. If you accept the Lord as your Lord and Savior, you will be saved, right? And he promises us eternal life. Yep. Let's read uh, Peter, uh, 1 Peter 1, 3 to 4. It's in your notes. Ready? Go. All praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is by his great mercy that we have been born again because God raised Jesus Christ from the dead. Now we live with great expectation and we have a priceless inheritance, an inheritance that is kept in heaven for you, pure and undefiled beyond the reach of chains and decay. This is the place, this is the mansion. Remember in the uh, books of Acts when Thomas asked Jesus, I preached that last month, about uh, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Thomas asked Jesus, Lord, where are you going? And uh, I, uh, Jesus answered Thomas, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So there's a mansion waiting for you guys there. This is where we are going to go. We are secured in this place. Amen? 
This is eternal life. This is heaven. This is sitting at the right hand of God. Amen? So that's eternal life, our final destination. Amen? So I am to... Now, eternal life is not a matter of chance. Believe you me. You got to accept Lord first as your Savior. Amen? ABCs of life. You have to accept that you're a sinner. And B, you have to accept that Lord is Lord, Jesus is Lord. And the, all, all, all of us have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, Matthew 6, 23. Matthew 3, 23 is the one that, uh, you know, you have to accept as a sinner. And then when you receive Jesus Christ, you will follow him all the way and he'll give you eternal life. Amen? So eternal life is not a matter of chance. It is a matter of choice, you guys. If anybody here who don't want to, or who want to follow Jesus Christ, maybe I could try Pray a little bit, sinners. Pastor Ben is good at that. I'll just make a short one later on. Anyway, it's a matter of choice. The choices we make, guys, between principle, that's the moral value of God, right? And, prince and, and, and preferences, that's the worldly thing. So the choices we make between principle and preferences are those that dictates our life, where we're going. Amen? The worst thing that happens in a person, if he doesn't have the right choice, he fails. Amen? And that person probably has no faith at all. My goodness, that's sad. If you have no faith at all, you have no personal relationship with God. I hope you have the supernatural relationship with God right now. It is with this great mercy and the love of Christ that we are thankful and when we walk with him. Amen? As believers, I hope you are guys are all believers. I know mostly of you, I can see you believers. As believers of Christ, we are secured where we are going. Where we are we going? Heaven, eternal life, right? Yes, that is with well, with the Lord someday. And look at Lamentation. I, you, you don't have that in your, uh, um, in your notes. Lamentations 3.23, it's about the faithfulness of God, that God have... Um, uh, the Lord has mercies that is never consumed for us. He has great mercy in us because His compassion never fails. It's always good in the morning. Great is thy faithfulness. That's Lamentations 3, 22 to 23. Anyways, by the way, the next one bullet will be number two. Be thankful that we have a purpose for living. Guys, what's your purpose in this life? God matters a lot. Yeah? Each one of us has a gift, I believe. Each one of us has a purpose in this life. Yeah? For, now, for the here, look at the, what Paul says in Ephesians 2.10. For we are his workmanship created in Christ for good works. Amen? Which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. So guys... This is open door. The door is open to everybody here. Not only you guys here, even the tourists come, uh, come and see. We have a website. I hope the people watching us and when, when Mr. Uh, Jimmy always uh, good in putting us on the website, you know, uh, messages. You can watch it on throughout. The, people are watching it throughout the world. Praise God from a wall blessing flow. Open door is open for everyone. Yeah. And uh, we are unique and one of a kind. You guys are mar okay, Look at the next verse. Psalms 139, 14. I will praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works, and that my soul knows very well. See, the Lord knows our hairs, the numbers of our hairs. Even before we were born, I think the Lord knows where we are. So I'm, we are predestined, each one of us. It's never an accident that you guys sitting down here. It's the Lord's will. It's it, what we call, you know, a divine proclamation, appointment. I can even follow myself talking to you and sharing the word right now. I don't know. My, my parents was, I'm so blessed my parents brought me up in church when I was young. So I can imagine now that, hey, this is what it is. There's no turning point back, yeah? We have, okay, are you guys decided? We have decided to follow Jesus. Can you sing with me? 
We have decided to follow Jesus. Come on, sing, guys. We have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. See, believe you me, guys. No turning back for me. Every day, whenever I open my eyes, I always give thanks to the Lord. That's why I love this message. Be thankful with a grateful heart. Whatever you have. You, we don't need money. Can we bring money in our grave? Well, it, it, we could buy something, but, you know, money should be able to be used for to bless other people. Yeah. Praise God. Okay. So next one here is, uh, where are we? Uh, let me see. Okay. We're done with uh, praise. Okay. The next one, you have been created. Okay, there you th this. Listen to this. You have been created to make a kingdom contribution, each one of you. Each one of us has about one, two, probably five, ten gifts that you can use for the kingdom of God. Amen? Do you you got to believe that. You know, present yourself a living sacrifice to God. You have a purpose for living. Amen? When we thank Him, it motivates us to look for His purposes in everything that He allows in our life. We are part of the body of Christ. Open door, you guys. You're very, very much welcome here. Open door is, again, open to everybody. His spirit is in us, and He wants us to prosper, not harm us. The song, the song I sang, Jeremiah 29, 11. Yeah, He's always giving us hope and future. And one of our purposes is to share this hope and blessing to the people around us. Amen? That's our purpose for living, guys. Evangelize and share the gospel to your family, to your friends, and to your acquaintance. I'm a Gideon, by the way. I've been Gideon for almost six years now. We're distributing Bibles to the elementary schools. And I have Bibles right now. If you don't have Bible, I can give you after the, the message, yeah, if you want. Look at this verse here. Uh, Oh, I think it's about God prepares us for this and he gave us word for us to use it to share the goodness. And we'll go to num uh, bullet number three now. Be thankful and grateful for God's road map. The Bible. This one. This is my American Express, you know. I never leave home without it. I have one in my car. I have one in my home. Wherever I go, I always make a point to have a Bible because sometimes the Lord is telling hey, it's about time to do devotion. Devotion is very important, guys. You have to be thankful in order to talk to God. Prayer is the way how to talk to God. It's a two-way street when you pray. God listens and then you answer. Also, if you hear His voice, you got to follow. You got to be obedient. Amen? So, basic instruction before leaving earth, Bible. B-I-B-L-E. Basic instruction before leaving earth. Yep. And this is the human manual. When you buy a car, you have the owner's manual. When you buy a refrigerator, you have the owner's manual. How about our life? This is our manual, guys. From Genesis to Revelation. 29 books in the Old Testament, 36 in the New Testament. Yep. So... Look at this. Another word by the King David. Psalms 119.105. Let's read it together. Ready? Go. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light for my path. Amen? It is that when you accepted the Lord as your Savior, you start to know Him. When you constantly read the Bible. Amen? Understand it. Not just reading we got to understand. If you don't understand it, I remember when I was young in the Philippines, my, my dad said, oh, you're reading the Bible. How would you understand it? It's English. <laughs> it's our second language in the Philippines. you got to have uh, a dictionary. Lo and behold, right now, I have all my, I have four books in shelves in my home, music, business, health, and my office is always the Lord. I have commentaries, dictionaries, everything. I even have five kinds of, I have Jewish Bible, I have Ilocano, Cebuano, Tagalog Bible, and I have the, I just completed the, the Pigeon Bible, the whole Bible. I, I bought one from Mililani. Oh, it's beautiful. The, uh, the whole book of, uh, New, if you want the New Testament copy, call Mililani Oahu Central in Mililani. 
they sell it for 35 bucks. It's good. I want to share how to next time preach in Pidgin. Main thing, he the king. Yeah, Jesus the king. Yeah, that's how we relate with you. When I talk to brother Rocky here, he talks Pidgin. I like to talk it in Pidgin because it's easier to understand the word of God sometimes. Anyways, yep. Let's take a look at uh, what Paul says. We sang this, Philippians 1.6. Let's read it together. Ready? Go. Being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it to completion until the day of Christ. Is that an amen? As we walk daily, my goodness, he, he began a good work in us. Do not stop. No turning back. We have decided to go all the way. Believe you me, I will never stop reading this Bible here. I will never stop praying with, to him every day. Pastor Ben and me were together. We've been together for 29 years now. I met Pastor Ben in 1994 when we were working in a nursing home. He's, I cannot, we've been, uh, Pastor Ben and I, we've been through three churches, but this is the good church that God gave us, open door. I like it here. I've been to the mega church, but this is better. The small, the first preaching I have was small with a big heart church. We are a small with a big heart church. Guys, we want to help you here. We'll come back with the Bible study on Wednesday. I'll tell Pastor Ben, we'll go back. We used to have a Wednesday Bible study here at lunchtime. We'll let you know. And then baptism is coming too. Okay, as believers, we continue to persevere. We get to know him more and more of him, less of us. That's when we increase, God increase in ourselves, we decrease the worldly flesh. Amen? So that's why we need to read God's word daily, guys. This is the way of life for Christians, and we, we are blessed to have this Bible here. <laughs> daily devotion is a norm. Look at what Evan, American evangelist D.L. Moody, I'll read it to you guys. He says here, the scriptures were not given to increase our knowledge, but to change people's lives. Do you know how many millions of people, uh, Billy Graham, evangelist, saved? Millions throughout the world. He's the number one American evangelist that I cannot, yeah, nobody else. But there's a lot of them, of course. Yeah, Pat Robertson just passed away. Greg Laurie is still doing it. They saved millions. Pastor Wayne Cordero, how many millions? Thousands of people. When I was a member of uh, uh, New Hope for seven years, we were about 25,000 here in Hawaii. He came from Hilo 15 years. How many people he saved in Hilo? And here in Honolulu. Guys, be with the Lord. Yeah. And uh, let's go forget the past. If you are in, don't accept la the Lord God, please, this is the right time to accept God if you don't believe in God. That brings us to number four. <clears throat> Be thankful and grateful that God is in control. Oh, where is there any police here? I don't like the government right now. <laughs> no politics right now. Be thankful and grateful that God is in control. What I'm trying to say, there's chaos going on. Ukraine, Russia, China is trying to take Taiwan, whatever, the Korea, and the government. And I think I've heard they want to put, again, the COVID back. That's crazy, yeah? God is in control. Look at what Isaiah says here. Isaiah 59, 55, 9. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. We must not view God through our difficulties. And again, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm a Republican. <laughs> I'm not a Democrat, sorry. We must not view God through our difficulties, right? What's going on around now. We must view our difficulties through God. Amen? I know, I could assume that you and guys, we have some, in, in our lives, we have to fix some things on ourselves. You know, we're not perfect. We're sinners. We stumble. The devil is getting us sometimes. If you, if you love the Lord more, the devil gets in your back. Do you, do, you know, do you believe in that? It happens to me, my wife and me sometimes. He knows who are weaknesses, so he goes there. So, but don't give up. Resist, yeah? Submit to God, resist the devil, and the devil will flee away. Amen? Amen. 
Amen. So, and we all know. Look at this, Romans 8, 28. This is so beautiful. I like this. Uh, you know this by heart. And we all know that in all things, God works for, though, for the good of those who love him, who have been, again, called according to his purpose. Remember, number two is we have a purpose in this life. God called us each one to be out there and share the gospel. Amen? Yeah. His mercy is brand new. I told you about Lamentations 3, 22 to 23. His mercy is brand new every morning. When you wake up, Lord, ah, great is thy faithfulness. Now, uh, maybe the best thing you can ask is, Lord, what can I do to make a difference today? Who can I share the gospel today? Who is going to be the first person I'm going to share with? Amen? So, the highest rewards for a person's trial is not what they get for it but what they become from it. This is from John Ruskin. He's an English writer and philosopher. Let me say it again. The highest rewards for a person's trials in his life is not what they get for it, but what they become it. Meaning to say, we are disciplined. We, we made mistakes and we perfect it. Yeah. What, what you become of it. Yeah. Okay, when God answers our prayers, we do rejoice. And what we shout? Praise the Lord! Where's my brother Millie? Always shouts, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God is good? All the time. All the time? Yes, all the time God is good. And again, I'm, I'm finishing up. We're on the bullet number five. Uh, but remember, guys, God is in control no matter what. If, 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 whether it's... When in your prosperity, you should, he's always in control. Even in diversity, he's in control because he can turn around. There's no such thing as, I have a book by Pat Robertson, When God Doesn't Make Sense. No. God makes sense all the time. Because if there's something wrong, wrong going on, he's going to turn that around and make it right. Amen? Okay, the last bullet. Lastly, let's be thankful and grateful that God accept us just the way you are. Ooh, this sounds so familiar to me. Yeah, I know, but that's Billy Joel. Just the way. How about, uh, how about Bruno Mars? Uh, yeah? Amazing, just the way you are. The two songs, by, but no. God, again, open doors to anybody. No matter what's your situation in life, God accepts you who you are. Amen? There is no exceptions in God. When he opens the door for you, you got to open, you know, knock on the door and open it up. And if you receive his voice, he'll dine with you. Revelations 20. I stand up knocking the door and then when you open, God will open. When you open the door and God is there, you better accept it or else... Somebody will. The crafty guy, the, sat the satanas, the Satan. The Lord does not look at the things man looks at. Yeah? The Lord does not look at that man looks at. Man looks at the outward appearance, but what that God looks at? The Lord looks at the heart. That's First Samuel 16, 7. You guys, again, as I told you, we are all sinners. But if we are sinners, if you have a repentant heart, you're going to be okay. Acts 3.19 says, repent and times of, uh, so that your sins will be wiped away and times of refreshing comes from the Lord. Amen? That's Acts 3.19. So we're wrapping up now. Whatever your situation in life, now whether you're in prosperity again or in diversity, the Lord God is waiting for you guys. If you haven't accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior, the right time is now. Amen? The right time is now. Can you please raise your hands who accepted God here? Can I see? Everybody, everybody should have accepted God. Come on. Praise God from home. Praise God. If you are not, I'll try to pray a little prayer for you, okay? Now, <clears throat> accepted, okay? Here, God's process of accept acceptance happens not just once. It's daily. If you don't accept today, maybe tomorrow, maybe today. But why would wait tomorrow when it's too late already for you? What if the tsunami comes or the, the, the you know, the... 
the fire in the sky comes. Like the, the rocket man, the crazy rocket man from uh, Korea, he's tried to shoot us, but halfway. Have, if you have seen the movie, what would you do if you have 10 minutes of your life? That was real. It was shown here. <coughs> the 10 minutes was the 10 minutes. What would you do if? Because that movie showed that the mi missiles really got in Hawaii. And a lot of people repented. You guys get to see that. What would you do if you have 10 minutes of your life when the missiles come here? Because, guys, World War III is no more. Boom, boom, like this. It's fire in the sky, the submarine, the mountains, the aircraft, the airplane. It's all missiles, fire in the sky. If you read Revelation, that's the end of times, the prophecy. If the, this world get crazy, World War III, China, Russia, Ukraine, Iran, the Middle East, ganging on Jerusalem and us, the allies. Anyways, let's finish up. Bottom verse. Oh, wait, let me see. God's arms are wide open daily, just as I told you. God's process of acceptance happens not just once, but daily. And then God's arms are wide open daily. Just say, Lord, here I am, your servant. Choose me him. To be the Lord of your life, He will never forsake you or leave you. Do you believe that, guys? God will never leave, forsake us or leave us. It is a good thing to delight in the Lord, but how much more enjoyable like life is when we realize that the Lord delights in us and we should be very thankful and grateful. Amen? Bottom verse. Let's read it. But we are bound to give thanks to God always. Brothers, beloved by the Lord, because God from the beginning choose you for salvation through sanctification by the Spirit and belief in the truth. Amen? Amen. So that's 2 Thessalonians 2.13. So be thankful and grateful to God gives us continuous awareness that we are walking in His presence, which contributes to living a godly life. Amen? The, this is his will for every single of us. So be thankful and grateful to God. Keeps us continually reminded of who he is and his position as God in our life. And we will give thanks to him. It energizes us, guys, physically, mentally, spiritually, every single way. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Thank you. This is the whole message I have. Thank you, guys. So keep the five things that uh, God, we should be thankful. Number one, we have the destination where we go, eternal life, heaven. And we have a purpose in this life. And then we have number three, we have the Bible that will lead us to grow more and more like him. Read the Bible daily, devotion. And we have, uh, God is in control in everything. We don't have to worry what's going on in this world, whether it's Republican or Democrat. God always is in control. Amen? And the last one is, come as you are. God receives you like who you are right now. doesn't matter whether we're poor or rich or not, whatnot. God accepts you. Amen? Praise God. Okay.